Having used both the Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro in the last month, I felt that there were a handful of differences between the two devices that warrant a separate review. During my time testing the two devices, I found more and more that I was enjoying the smaller form factor of the Pixel 8 over the 8 Pro in most cases. Aesthetically, Google sticks to the same design language that has graced the last two generations of Pixel devices. The Pixel 8 essentially shares the same signature camera bar design as last year's Pixel 7. You'd be hard pressed to tell the differences between the two from the rear of the device. This year, Google has decided to make the Pixel 8 more compact, making it slightly lighter than last year's Pixel 7. In terms of ergonomics, the combination of the more rounded edges and smaller size makes it a lot more comfortable to hold and use one-handed, especially when it comes to one-handed typing. Although personally, I still prefer the typing experience on the Pixel 8 Pro, mainly due to my larger hands. Speaking of typing experience, the haptics are better than ever, and I'm glad that Google has not made this less of a priority on the non-Pro devices. The Pixel 8 has a glossy finish on the back, made up of Corning Gorilla Glass Victus with a matte aluminium frame. I personally would have preferred a matte back finish, and it's a shame that the Pixel 8 doesn't see the upgrade to Gorilla Glass Victus 2 like on the Pixel 8 Pro. It is likely that Google has decided to do so in order to keep the cost down. The Pixel 8 has the same IP68 rating for water and dust resistant like on the 8 Pro. You'll also get face unlock with Class 3 biometrics, allowing you to use the front camera to unlock your device, but also to sign into banking apps. Otherwise, there's also the same optical fingerprint sensor that's found on the Pixel 8 Pro. You'll get the usual obsidian color, with hazel and rose being the two new color variants this year for the non-pro model, with obsidian the only color option to have the higher storage option. Personally, having had the Pixel 7 Pro in hazel, I had to get the Pixel 8 in the same option, and it has personally been my favorite color. With the more compact design comes a slightly smaller 6.2 inch OLED display, with a pixel resolution of 2400 by 1080 at 428 pixels per inch. Now you won't get an LTPO display like what you find on the Pixel 8 Pro, but you do get an upgrade to a 120Hz panel over the 90Hz found on last year's Pixel 7. I personally appreciate the upgrade to 120Hz as it makes the scrolling experience so much more enjoyable. The display on the Pixel 8 is called an actual display with a significant upgrade to 2000 nits of peak brightness making it 42% brighter than the 1400 nits found on the Pixel 7. Now it isn't as bright as the display found on the Pixel 8 Pro, but you still get excellent visibility in bright daylight. And as you come to expect from a Pixel device, the display has a great contrast with rich colors, making it one of the best displays to view content albeit on a slightly smaller screen. In regards to battery life, the Pixel 8 will last you the full day of use without needing to top up during the day and should provide you with all day battery. Personally, I've been averaging about 5-6 to six hours of screen on time every day. This is certainly an improvement over last year's Pixel 7, as the Pixel 8 is packed with a slightly larger 4575mAh battery. You'll also get a slight bump up in charging speeds to 27 watts on the Pixel 8, up from the 23 watts on the Pixel 7, whilst wireless charging speeds remain the same, and it's limited to just 18 watt charging with the Pixel Stand Gen 2 but will unfortunately be capped at 12 watt charging with any other third party wireless charger. Otherwise, wired charging will take roughly an hour and a half to charge up the device from 0 to 100. When it comes to performance, you get Google's latest Tensor Silicon on both the Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro, so it's no surprise that the Pixel 8 benchmarks the same as its Pro counterpart. I mentioned before in my Pixel 8 Pro review, Google's focus is not on performance, but rather on machine learning and image processing featuring AI. You'll get 8GB of RAM which is slightly lower than what is on the Pro model, but personally, I will say for most, you won't have any issues with multitasking and having multiple apps running in the background, but you might find that the occasional app closure due to RAM management. Overall, performance has been snappy and you definitely won't run into any issues with it as your daily driver, but if you're looking for raw performance, I suggest you'll look elsewhere, as the Tensor Gen 3 chip still benchmarks lower than its Snapdragon counterpart. But if you're looking to play occasional games and aren't concerned with running games on its higher settings with higher frame rates, then the Pixel 8 will suit you just fine. Google continues to impress in the camera department. However, the Pixel 8 still unfortunately comes with dual lenses on the back. You'll get a 50 megapixel wide camera with a larger aperture allowing the photo to capture more light, which helps with low light photography, especially with those nighttime shots with night sight. This year, you'll get the same 12 megapixel ultra wide from last year's Pixel 7 Pro, 
with a slightly larger field of view of 126 degrees over the 114 degrees on the Pixel 7. This year, the ultra wide on the Pixel 8 doubles up as a macro lens, allowing you to take those close up photos, which is a welcoming upgrade as this was lacking in last year's Pixel 7. The telephoto camera with 30x super res zoom is unfortunately only available on the 8 Pro, but you'll still be able to take those portrait shots and up to 8x zoom, but this is all done digitally. You can still shoot up to 4K at 60 frames per second with an added 24 frames per second mode, but otherwise video capability remains unchanged from last year's Pixel 7. You'll also get a 10.5 megapixel front facing camera, which is the same as what you get on the Pixel 8 Pro. Now unfortunately you won't get pro manual control options like you get on the Pixel 8 Pro, so you won't be able to shoot with the full 50 megapixel lens. Instead, you'll get images that are binned down to 12.5 megapixels. It is disappointing to see Google limiting software features on the non-pro model, as it has a similar hardware to the Pixel 8 Pro. As expected, the Pixel phones are no slouch when it comes to photography, and it certainly excels in capturing more true-to-life photos. You get great dynamic range and great contrast in photos, with images remaining sharp and vibrant. Outside of the Pro camera controls and video boosts, which are exclusive to the 8 Pro, all the other software features and camera AI magic are available on the Pixel 8. You will also get 7 years of OS update, which brings software support and feature drop updates to 2030. All the other useful Pixel features like call screening, hold for me, and quick tap gestures, including better speech to text recognition and transcription, all make a return. These are all very useful features that are very helpful in day to day use. Lastly, you'll even get all the AI software magic with Magic Editor, Magic Eraser, and Best Take on the Pixel 8. Now, I won't go into too much detail but do check out my Pixel 8 Pro review for a more detailed look at these features. Link in the description below. Overall, the Pixel 8 feels like the most refined Pixel yet, and Google has definitely made numerous improvements in both hardware and software over the Pixel 7. Having said that, if you're coming from the Pixel 7, I would definitely hold off on upgrading as these improvements are only minor. And here's hoping that some of the AI software magic will come in a future feature drop. As most of the processing is done in the cloud, this year, more than ever, Google has widened the gap between the Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro, especially when it comes to software and hardware features, but in particular, the price. The Pixel 8 will set you back at $1,199 as compared to the $1,699 for the Pixel 8 Pro. And personally, the $500 difference here in Australia isn't justifiable, unless you really want the best of what Google is offering with the Pixel 8 Pro. Otherwise, I would recommend using those savings on either the Pixel Buds Pro or even the Pixel Watch 2. The Pixel 8 is a nice middle ground between the Pixel 7a and the 8 Pro in Google's latest lineup, not only in terms of the price, but also with its software and hardware features. I have honestly enjoyed my time with the Pixel 8, with it being the phone I would recommend for most Android users. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up as this helps the channel out immensely. And a huge thank you for those who have subscribed to the channel, who have passed 100 subscribers in the last video with over 10,000 views. Please subscribe for more tech videos as we try and reach 1,000 subscribers 